Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, so first of all, I want to apologize for the wonky audio. I know it is not the best quality, um, but I'm actually recording this from the hospital room um, on an iPad. Um, little backstory that I want to share. Um, my husband surprised me by getting me an iPad Pro, which was one of the coolest things ever um, because I'm still currently laid up in the hospital. Um, so yeah, he got me the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil and Procreate so I can make videos while in the hospital and it's kind of like the coolest thing ever and I'm having so much fun with it and like I feel better enough being here that I want to be productive again. So having the iPad allows me to be productive while I'm still here. So that is amazing. Uh, like I said, I am using the Procreate app, which is an amazing app and basically all I could ever need for drawing. Like this is like, it looks just like a pencil right here, right? Anyway, um, I want to make another video talking about Procreate and like how I use it and stuff, but that is not what I'm gonna be doing today. Last week, I asked you guys to ask me some questions about cystic fibrosis and having a chronic illness. So I am going to be answering your guys' questions. And first of all, I do wanna say thank you so much to everyone who gave me well wishes or shared your stories with me or asked me questions. Honestly, having you guys here and having such a great support system helps the hospital stay just go so much better and smoother and easier and gives me something to do. So I am so, thankful for you guys. So uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> moving on now with the questions. Um, the first question I have is, is there a cure for cystic fibrosis? And the answer is no. Um, there's not currently a cure for it. Um, all the treatments that are out there are for um, management and um, prolonging, prolonging the life expectancy for people with cystic fibrosis and for like managing the symptoms and stuff. But there's no cure but that is what, um, that's what research is working on right now. So when you donate to cystic fibrosis, you're donating to help find a cure. Um, also, I'm sorry if this recording is really like chopped up and stuff. Um, I keep having doctors come in like every five minutes to check on me. So um, yeah, anyway, moving on. The next question is, do your lungs hurt every day? Um, normally, no, my lungs don't quite hurt every single day. Um, I usually wake up with some kind of like tightness or uncomfortableness in my chest, um, but then I do like my therapy, my medicines, and it usually goes away. Um, but when I have an exasperation like this and I get really sick, um, then yes, my lungs hurt a lot. <clears throat> and I'll be coughing a lot, which then just kind of makes like everything hurt. My stomach muscles will hurt, my chest muscles will hurt, um, but that's kind of normal for when I'm sick, but not normal every other, like every other day. Um, what do you do in the hospital to pass time? Um, when I'm in the hospital, usually I'm kind of not really doing anything. Um, it's kind of hard because also when you're in the hospital, you usually have doctors coming in and you're doing tests and you really don't get like a whole lot of rest in the hospital, which I know sounds kind of weird. <clears throat> but usually you're being woken up every few hours and getting medications and all this kind of stuff. So usually when I'm in the hospital, I'm sleeping if I have any free time. Um, plus whenever I feel really sick like this, I get super, super extremely lethargic and tired. I don't really want to do anything. Um, so for the most part, if I'm in the hospital, I'm usually not doing much of anything and I don't really get that bored. Um, this time, however, was a little different because I was in here for so much longer. Um, so to pass the time, I watch a lot of YouTube, <laughs> um, and luckily I was able to draw. Usually I don't bring any drawing supplies just because I have a lot of supplies and I don't want to worry about like losing anything or bringing them all here and stuff. Um, but I have the iPad now so I can draw, which has been like a godsend. Thank you again to my husband. Um, and I also read a lot. I actually brought a book with me, um, but the book ended up not being very good and I lost interest. But um, anyway, so YouTube drawing and reading are basically my main things to keep myself preoccupied when I'm laid up in the hospital. <clears throat> okay, so the next question is how do you balance daily life, YouTube, and illness? Um, Balance is not something I'm great at, if I'm being totally honest. Um, it's kind of hard for me to balance everything. Um, 
I, I really don't know. Um, whenever I get sick, I just try to like remind myself, whenever I can feel myself getting sick, I try to focus on getting better instead of focusing on like being productive or I don't know, stuff around the house. I try to make sure that I put my health first, um, which has been kind of really hard to learn because I am the kind of person who wants to be constantly doing something and constantly being productive. And it's really hard to do that when you can't get out of bed. So I kind of had to teach myself that it's okay to put my health first and it's okay to focus on getting better instead of focusing on the fact that I can't do anything, if that makes sense. Um, this another question, how does CF affect your everyday life? So um, I, I don't want to say that my life revolves around CF because it doesn't, but CF does, is like a part of my daily life. Like I'm always doing something to like help cystic fibrosis, if that makes any sense. Um, but for an example, like every day I start off the morning, the first thing I do every morning is I take my breathing medications. And I do this thing called uh, the vest, which is a physical therapy. Um, basically, I put on this bulletproof looking vest and it literally vibrates my chest and my lungs. Um, and it helps break up the mucus that's in there. Um, so that's how I start off every day. It takes about two hours to finish all that therapy. Um, and that's kind of like my routine. And then I do that before I go to bed as well. Um, CF also affects my daily life because I have to be constantly thinking about like do I feel healthy enough to do this? Um, if I do this thing will it impact my health in a negative way? It's just always like in the back of my mind. Um, also uh, CF, I don't want to say CF has caused my depression and anxiety but it definitely makes it worse. So um, it's just like this little voice in the back of my head that's always there that's like you're gonna get sick soon and you know you can't do this or you're gonna get sick and um, you can't get sick because you have to do this this and this this and it kind of is just like this constant source of anxiety for me um, but I'm trying to get better at managing it because it, it it kind of stops me from doing things sometimes like I'll be like I don't want to do this thing because I might get sick and then I don't want to like stop living my life because I'm scared of getting sick if that makes any sense um, so yeah, that's kind of how CF affects like my everyday life that I can think of at the top of my head. Um, like I said, I don't want to be one of those people that like their life revolves around being sick, but it's kind of hard when you're sick as often as I am. So I'm trying to find like a good balance of being like aware of things and like trying to not put myself in situations that will ultimately get me sick, but also not like preventing myself from living my life either. <clears throat> okay, next question. How do you feel with loneliness in the hospital? Um, this is a good question and it's really tough sometimes. Um, luckily, I have an amazing support system. My husband, for example, has been visiting me every single day and bringing me snacks and stuff. Um, so that is honestly like a huge help. Um, and when I lived back in Vegas, um, I would have my friends or I wouldn't have them. My friends would offer to come visit me and my mom would visit me and all that kind of stuff. So honestly, having a good support system is crucial to combating that loneliness because it does get quite lonely when you're here and like the only people that you see are like doctors and nurses and it's definitely rough. And then you're kind of just alone with your thoughts a lot too, especially if you don't have like the energy to get up and do things or I don't know, for the first few days I was here, I really did nothing but just lay around because I just felt so awful. Um, and that can kind of affect your mental health and kind of make you feel really alone. Um, so definitely having just a good support group, a good support system of friends or family. The internet has been also great because I can talk to my friends all the way home while being here and it's just, it's great. So. Um, I try to just remind myself that I'm not alone and I have people who do love me and even though it's hard being here and away from them, um, they're still here for me, even if not physically. Okay, how do you cope with battling illness while trying to keep up with your art? Um, I kind of answered this already, but I try to uh, remind myself that it's okay to be sick and it's okay to take time when I feel sick to not do anything. 
Um, I try not to beat myself up too bad if like I go a whole day without drawing because I just feel too bad. Um, it's kind of more taking care of my mental health than anything else. Um, and then whenever I do feel good, I can draw again. That's something else. Like just because I'm sick right now doesn't mean I'll never be able to draw again. So I just remind myself, okay, you feel bad right now, but you're going to get healthy again and then you'll be able to draw again. So just hold out until then. Um, how would you feel if a non-CF person did something for charity for CF? Um, that would be awesome. Like, honestly, to the person who asked this question, if there's anything you want to do, like, go out and do it, honestly. Um, it makes me so happy to see people raising awareness for CF, um, especially if they don't have it themselves. That's a pretty selfless thing to do, and I think that's really awesome. Um, but yeah, if you want to, like, raise money or raise awareness or anything like that, go out and do it. I will, like, fully support you. <clears throat> And that's the same with any illness, I think. Like, I don't think anyone would, like, be opposed to someone raising awareness or, like, a charity event for their own illness. Um, I think that's just, like, a really awesome thing to do. Um, okay, now this question is an amazing question, and it's kind of really heavy, but I really wanted to talk about it, and I may make a separate video for this. Um, but the question is, how do you deal with the anxiety and awareness of mortality that comes with being ill? Um, when I was about 10, my doctor sat me down and they told me and my brother that we had um, a shorter life expectancy than the average person and that likely we would need a lung transplant by the age of 20 or so and that our life expectancy was 35. So ever since I was little, I kind of had this awareness that I was going to die. And I know a lot of people don't grow up with that. So I kind of have an interesting relationship with mortality and I've had a lot of time to kind of come to terms with it. Um, when I was a kid, it didn't really affect me because the idea of death was so far away. And like when you're 10 years old, like 30 is old, you know, like 30 years old is not, it's, it's like old, you're old at that point when you're 10. Um, but the more I grew up, the more it started to bother me. Um, and especially when I was in high school, I kind of went through this period of just extreme anxiety and just worrying about everything about my health, about the future, about, oh my God, like, you know, I couldn't, I almost had like a breakdown because I was just so anxious about everything. Um, but since then I've kind of come to terms with it. Like, I don't know. I have this train of thought that like, nothing see I don't want to say nothing matters because that's not true but like the universe will continue on with or without me and that sounds kind of scary and kind of negative but for me it kind of brings me peace like I am not the most important important person in the world you know I am not like a character in a young adult novel I'm not going to save the world I'm not I don't have this destiny planned out for me and that brings me peace because I can just live my life, even if it's shorter than the average person's, I can live my life how I want to live it and I'm going to live it on my own terms and I'm just going to do what makes me happy ultimately and that brings me peace. And uh, the hardest thing about thinking of mortality at this point for me is thinking about how it'll affect other people. Like that's what kind of hangs me up the most is thinking about my family and my husband and my friends and stuff. Like I don't want to leave them behind, but I've come to terms with the fact that I will die someday. And I've kind of come to terms also with the fact that I may die sooner. Um, so I'm kind of just trying to live my life how I want to live it right now. So that way, if I were to die tomorrow, I would die happy, you know? So I try to make every day a day that is happy and good. And it every day should be a day where if I were to die, I would die happy, if that makes sense. So I do the things that make me happy. So I you know, buy stupid bath bombs and I take really nice long baths, for example, just like the little things. I think that's what it comes down to. Every day I do the little things that make me happy and that makes a whole lot of difference. So I will 
I don't know, make my favorite food all the time, over and over again, because it makes me happy. Um, I watch my favorite movies, and I watch, you know, dumb cartoons because they make me happy. Basically, I do what makes me happy, and I forget about what anyone else would say or think about it because I'm gonna die soon. Maybe not soon, but I'm gonna die someday. So why would I live my life, because it's so short, why would I live my life doing anything other than what I want to do and how I want to live? So anyway, that's kind of... Ah, I wish I phrased that better, but I hope you guys understand what I mean. And like I said, I do want to make a longer video about that because I think it's really important for people with chronic illnesses to come to terms with mortality because it used to be such a hard thing for me to accept and it used to be just so like a constant source of anxiety for me so I feel like the sooner people come to terms with that the better off they're going to be and then they can move past it and then like live their best life because I feel like I'm living my best life every single day right now okay so moving on where am I what is preventing doctors from finding a cure for CF? This is also a really good question. Um, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease, so that means like it alters my genes. My genes aren't normal, and gene therapy is not something that's easy to deal with. Um, they are working on it, like that is where the research is going into gene therapy and actually fixing the genes themselves instead of um, like combating the side effects of CF, um, but also, Everyone with CF has a slightly different CF than the other person. So like me and my brother, we don't have the same disease. We both have CF, but it's not the same CF. So that makes it really hard because, you know, how do you cure something when there's 30,000 different versions of it, you know? <clears throat> so I don't try to understand all the sciencey stuff, but that's what I understand. That's like the biggest holdup of it. Um, but yeah, the research is moving along and there's always new stuff coming out, so I am hopeful. Um, I try not to hold on to, oh, they're going to cure it in my lifetime because I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to like say, oh, they're going to cure it soon because what if they don't? So I kind of live every day hoping for a cure and like, oh, that would be great, but I don't want to like hold on to that too closely just in case it doesn't happen. Um, I would love for it to happen, and I would love for it to happen sooner rather than later, of course. Um, but I also want, I also want a cure for not just myself, but for everyone with CF. Like my brother has CF as well, and I would be more happy, honestly, to cure him than I would to cure myself. Um, so I am hopeful for a cure, but I'm not holding on to it. If that makes sense. Um, would you be interested in making merchandise about cystic fibrosis? Um, you are kind of a little bit ahead of me because I am planning on some really fun merchandise uh, revolving around CF. I do have a few prints in my shop that have been inspired by how I feel about CF, but I actually want to make enamel pins for different chronic illnesses, CF being the first one. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I think I may do a Kickstarter because enamel pins are a little expensive, but yeah, that's something that I've been toying with the idea with. So let me know what you guys think about that. And okay, this is a question that's uh, not quite about CF, but I thought it was interesting. How is it like being vegan and being in the hospital? So for those of you who don't know, I am vegan. Um, and it's hard being vegan in the hospital, guys for many reasons. Um, first, of course, the food options are not super great. Of course, it's a hospital. They do what they can. Um, and second of all, it's hard. It's not hard being vegan. I do want to say that. It is not hard to be vegan, but you do have to make conscious choices every day. And when you're as sick as I was when I first got here, I didn't care, you know? I only cared about getting better. So being vegan was like in the back of my mind at this point. So I just told the hospital that I was vegetarian because meat is something that I just cannot eat anymore, like at all. Um, so I've just been eating vegetarian while being here. Um, it just makes everything go smoother. And another thing about CF is that um, we often have problems with being underweight and being malnourished. So 
uh, the, something about being vegan is that like all my meals are lower calorie than the average meal because I eat mainly all, I eat all plants. Um, so I kind of wanted to, I was okay with being vegetarian for a little while because I knew that it would help me gain a little bit of weight, which is good because, um, if you're underweight, your body can't fight the infection as easily. Um, and I just honestly didn't want to deal with, oh, I can't eat this, I can't eat this, do you have a replacement for this? And like I said, normally it's not a problem, and normally I have no issue doing that, but I just didn't want to deal with it while being so sick. So, yeah, hopefully that answers that question. Um, for anyone who is vegan and in the hospital, I want to say it's okay to eat vegetarian for a little while, um, just because you need to get better, you know, you need to put your focus on getting better. And then as soon as you're out of the hospital, you can eat vegan again, which is what I'm going to be doing. Um, <clears throat> but it's okay to kind of just focus on getting better because you can help the animals when you get out. Um, so yeah, those were all of the CF related questions that I got. So I'm going to answer a few random questions that I got. Um, what is your favorite song? My favorite song changes from all the time. Like whenever I find a new favorite song, like it changes to that um but for right now it is probably guns for hands by 21 pilots um 21 pilots is one of my all-time favorite bands and guns for hands is like just such a good song and it resonates with me so hard um so yeah and what is your favorite disney movie my favorite disney movie is actually lilo and stitch um i would watch that all the time when i was younger and it still makes me cry every time um, and it's just, it has such a special place in my heart. I love it so much. Um, who are your favorite YouTubers? So, of course, all the art community YouTubers are my favorite. Like, Hello Alice is such a sweetheart. Amanda Elise is, like, such a good friend of mine, too. Um, uh, Danica Sills, uh, blah, 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 Sophia Lou, all of the people in the collective, really, are a la carte. Um, other YouTubers that are not in the uh, art community that I still love, um, I'm obsessed with Jenna Marbles. I want to be her best friend. Um, Glam and Gore, her YouTube channel is insanely awesome. I love her. Um, Jax Films also. Uh, Philip DeFranco and um, am I forgetting someone? I feel like I'm forgetting like a huge one, but I can't think of them right now. Um, but yeah, those are some of my like all-time favorite YouTubers. Um, do you have any advice on boy trouble? We both like each other, but things have been kind of slow. Um, honestly, communication is like the biggest thing for any kind of boy troubles or girl troubles or just people troubles, honestly. Um, just communicate. If, if things are going like too slow for you, tell them that. Be like, hey, I like you. I want to go out with you. Do you want to go out with me? Um, just honestly, I know it's kind of scary, but you got to communicate with them. Just be like totally open and just be honest with your feelings and just, just talk to them. Um, okay. So I think we are rounding up on the end of this video. So, um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed learning more about CF. Um, if you have any more questions that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to leave them below and I will do my best to answer all of them. Um, also let me know if you guys would be interested in more videos like about chronic illness. I've been thinking about it for a while and I kind of want to make like a series about different chronic illness related topics because I know there's quite a few of you here who battle with chronic illnesses so I don't know just something that's been popping around in my head. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, also, let me know what you think about this video. I don't do a lot of digital stuff on my channel, but let me know if you'd like to see more. Um, and also, let's hope I get out of this hospital soon. Uh, I should be getting out in the next few days or so. Um, very excited about that. I really miss my dog and my cat. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, I love you all so much. I am so grateful for every single one of you. You're all the best, and I hope you have an excellent weekend and an excellent week. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys next week for my next video. Um, yeah, that's about it. I really love you guys. Um, I'll see you next week. Bye.